Content scripts are one of the superpowers of Chrome extensions. They let you add your own CSS and JavaScript to a website. You can use them to change the layout of a page, like hiding certain UI that you don't need at any given time. You can even use them to automate an entire workflow by interacting with the page in JavaScript and filling out a form, for example. The basic idea behind content scripts is fairly straightforward. Your extension can inject custom JavaScript and CSS into the page. With these, you can modify the behavior, content, and style of any web page. But there are a few things that you should know in order to use content scripts effectively. Let's start by talking about the various ways of registering CSS or JavaScript as a content script. You can register content scripts in your manifest or using an API, or even inject them at an arbitrary time. If you know you want the CSS or JavaScript to be added on every load of a given page, use the content underscore scripts key in the manifest. You can provide an array of match patterns to specify which sites the content script is added to. And the benefit of doing things this way is that the browser handles the injection and can do it at the right time every time. If you need some additional control, for example, if there's a setting within your extension to enable or disable the script, you can use the register content scripts method of the scripting API. This allows you to add and remove registered scripts at runtime. Finally, maybe you only need to inject the script once. For example, when a user specifically triggers some functionality with a keyboard shortcut. In those cases, you can use the execute script method. Your content script, at least in the default case, I'll say some more on this later, has access to four key namespaces containing a number of extension specific APIs. For example, the chrome.runtime APIs can be used to communicate with other parts of your extension from your content script. Content scripts can also access settings and other data that share between parts of your extension. This is done using the chrome.storage APIs. Chrome.iatn allows you to retrieve information about the browser's language settings and to retrieve localized messages. And finally, the chrome.dom namespace allows you to do DOM-related operations, which aren't possible with existing JavaScript APIs. So when a content script's injected, you can actually control this as an extension developer. The default setting in all cases is to run at document idle. The exact timing can vary, but by this point, the page is likely finished loading and the DOM will be complete. This is the preferred option too, since it avoids running extra scripts during load and slowing things down for the user. You can specify a different option with the run at field in the manifest or the register content scripts API. One alternative option is document underscore end. This is before images are finished loading, but after the DOM is ready. The final option is document underscore start, which is before any other scripts have run. Now you won't usually need this, but some extensions use it in special circumstances. For example, if you want to overwrite a JavaScript property that another script may access and have certainty that no script has already accessed it. If you're using the execute script API, document underscore idle is used by default. You can set the inject immediately flag to use document underscore start instead. However, because there's likely some delay between when the load starts and you call this API, there's no guarantee of the exact timing. You might be wondering if a content script can be injected into an iframe. Absolutely. In the manifest, as well as when using the register content scripts API, you can specify all underscore frames to inject into matching frames. Just set the value to true. Some frames, like a blank frame or one containing a blob URL, will never match a matches pattern. In this case, you can set match origin as fallback to true. When set, Chrome will decide whether to inject a content script by falling back to the origin of the frame that created this one and matching based on that. For example, if you have a content script that matches example.com and match origin as fallback is set to true, then that content script will also be injected into blank frames added on example.com. There are a few security features the browser has which are relevant to content scripts. A website can restrict certain functionality by sending a content security policy header or adding a meta tag to the head of the page. For example, using the connect source directive to block certain fetch requests. As an example, on a site with a policy whose connect source directive doesn't permit example.com, then fetch example.com will fail. You can check to see if this is the case in DevTools. 
look out for the meta tag in the source panel or a content security policy header in the network panel. Now these restrictions apply to your content scripts too. If you need to bypass them, send a message from your content script to another part of your extension and perform the work there. So in the case of a fetch request, you could make the request in your extension service worker instead, where it won't be subject to the security policy. Similarly, the same cross-origin resource sharing or cause restrictions that apply to websites apply to content scripts. For instance, if example.com tries to make a request to a.com and a.com hasn't explicitly allowed that, then the request will be blocked. These restrictions don't always apply in other parts of your extension. It depends on the host permissions that are requested in your manifest, but they always apply to content scripts. Now, if content scripts really just ran as another script on the page, it'd be hard to know that your content script was running as expected. That's because a malicious site could overwrite an API like json.pass, which is exposed on the window. When your content script called the function, the new function would be run rather than the built-in one. To protect against this, content scripts are injected into an isolated world by default. This is a concept in V8, the JavaScript engine used by Chrome. Now, worlds share some things with each other. For example, if you call document.query selector, your content script will still be able to access all of the elements on the page. However, there is some isolation too. For example, each world has its own window. So you know that if you call a function, it's the one you expect. Any JavaScript references to elements use separate instances too. So with all of that said, what if you really do need to run in the same world as other scripts? For example, maybe your extension adds a new API to the page that other scripts will still want to be able to access. Both the content script declaration and the scripting API support the world parameter, which you can set to main. Just be aware that when you do this, your script will no longer have access to extension APIs. And of course, you have even less protection from other scripts running on the page. So avoid handling any sensitive data that the page isn't already able to access. Okay, there's one more thing that I want to tell you about, which can help you with keeping users of your extension safe. Put simply, you should limit the privileges you give to content scripts and avoid giving them access to anything they don't need. For example, content scripts have access to data in the chrome.storage API by default. But if you're using that API elsewhere, you might want to consider calling the storage.setAccess level method with trusted underscore contexts. That removes the direct access that content scripts have. Of course, you can still use the messaging APIs to give content scripts access to just the specific data they need. You're just limiting unrestricted access through the API to prevent a content script from reading data it doesn't have a need to read. Similarly, in any message handlers elsewhere in your extension, consider checking to see if the sender is who you expect using the sender.url property. This can allow you to return an error if a message comes from somewhere unexpected. For example, if a content script sends a message that you only ever expected your pop-up to send. So why is all of this important? Well, in the past, malicious websites have found ways to gain capabilities beyond what is exposed in JavaScript, compromising the entire process that they're running in. Despite being in a separate world, content scripts still run in the same process. So if a website manages to compromise the process, the other scripts on the page can access anything your content script can, and that includes sending messages impersonating your content script. So by limiting what a content script can do, you can limit the risk that this poses to users. And together, we can all work to make the web safer. Now you understand everything that's possible with content scripts, as well as how to keep them safe, we should talk about performance. Site owners often put a lot of effort into keeping their site fast. Fast and responsive sites keep users happy, and that's a win for everyone. Now, content scripts can have a performance impact in the same way any other script on the page can, affecting load times and how quickly the page can respond to user input. For example, you shouldn't add an event listener to an element and do too much work directly in the listener. Instead, send a message to another part of your extension and do any expensive work in the background. Similarly, follow all of the other best practices you can find in other videos on this channel and in our documentation. When you use the performance tab in DevTools, you'll see any work performed by content scripts. That's a great way to see if your extension is having an impact. Try doing one recording with your extension disabled, another with it turned on, and compare the results. 
And that's all there is to know about content scripts. For more information, take a look at our documentation on developer.chrome.com. See you next time.